right, welcome back to The Sauce. I'm here with the band that's releasing their first new studio album in six years Woo. next month. Please welcome to the couch, Woo. Counting Crows. Hi. I got to tell you, we don't bust out the additions to our orange couch for just anybody. <laughs> no. okay. So we wanted you all, all here. Now, with a, with a catalog like yours, uh, like back over 80 songs, do you, is there a favorite of the whole band or are there individual favorites that you like to play live? Um, I don't really have particular favorites for me. I mean, they're kind of like your elbow or your knee. Okay. I just feel, uh, I well, but that's different for me because I, I wrote a lot of the words, so to me, it's okay. kind of parts of it. Some of them are more fun to play live. The one we're playing later on is kind of a blast. That's only the second time we've ever played, you can count on me. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we played it the other night. This is the only second time we played it live. I, th I think it sounded very good. Yeah. I think we're. I think with a little practice, we, we could really. <laughs> yeah. We could really beat something. I think you can sound. I think you guys can really make something of yourselves. Put a little effort in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think it went, went really well. Thanks, Dad. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Easy, son. Clean your room. <laughs> All right. So when when you play songs, when you play them live, I mean, do, are there any live versions of your songs, like bootlegs, things that like you you've recorded your live performances that you like better, or you think sound better than the original, the way you put them on the record? Um. I find there's a lot that sounds different, okay. um, which is just natural because, you know, it shows like a coffee filter. You pour your life through it, mm -hmm. pour the song through it that day and it comes out a little differently. All right. Um, I don't know about better. The only ones I think sound better to me are some of the ones on August because I don't think I was, uh, I was singing as well when we were doing our first oh, album. Okay. I, I, think I, I think I got to be a better singer after that. All right. Other than that, I don't really judge them much. You guys got ones that you like better live? Uh, changes from <clears throat> show yeah. to show, really, from day to day. Night to night. I like I think I tour to tour. I feel like I sing Anna Begins a lot better now than I did okay. then. There's there's about three or four songs <laughs> on the first album that I just wish I'd known how to sing them better then. All I don't right. really understand the songs yet. Uh, here's a big question. What have you guys been doing for the past six years? <laughs> <laughs> Suspended animation. Really? You look great. It's incredible. We didn't want to get any older, so we just sort of... Okay. It's good for the skin. Like Walt Disney. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm feeling that little cryogenics. Mm. Emmy was cryogenically frozen. Wow. It's left him with very dry skin. Mm. Moisturizer <laughs> and... Well, we, you know, we tour a lot, so there's always a chunk of time between yeah. albums for us, but a lot of that has to do with just being on the road. Right. And we toured for a really long time. We toured for about a year and a half plus after this desert life, toured while we were making Hard Candy, because that seemed like a bright idea at the time. <laughs> and then we toured through Hard Candy, through the Greatest Hits album, and through the Shrek thing. So it had been about five years on the road total. Lordy. At that point, I, I was pretty much ready to, like, light my head on fire mm. and jump off a... Couch, maybe. No, Fair nothing, enough. Nothing, nothing really. Couch, couch. Really. An orange couch. couch. <laughs> or like the side of a pool into the pool just to put the Fair hair enough. on fire out. Well, I guess, yeah. Although I don't think this stuff actually burns. I, might, I think the melts. smell would probably kill yeah. more than anything. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Anyone got a lighter? <laughs> Anybody? We can find out. We're not, we're not an airport. Is this like an airplane where you can't bring them in? No, you can't. Tweezers, lighters. No tweezers, Spoons. lighters. So March 25th, the record comes out Saturday nights and Sunday mornings. When, since you've been touring all the time, did you work on the songs on the road? Do you write on the road? Uh, very little, um, just because I write on piano, so it's really hard. I mean, I wrote, we finished, uh, <laughs> we, we started bringing a little keyboard uh, on the bus and started bringing in when we were doing uh, Accidentally in Love, because we had sure. to try and finish it up. We wrote half of it at home, and then we wrote the, the other half of it in a hotel in Manchester, I think. We all came to London and okay. finished that up. So I had a piano that was there. unusual situation. Yeah, but we kept it after that, and a few days after we, before we recorded it, I had the piano in, in my uh, hotel room in Amsterdam and wrote a, on a Tuesday in Amsterdam long ago. Right. It was written a couple days after Accidentally Love was finished. Now clarify, this is two records. It is. It's a record called Saturday Nights and a record called Sunday Mornings. Okay, great. Now they, it's both going to be released simultaneously. Well, they're they, they're on one CD. Okay. They're meant to fit together. Oh, gotcha. It's so, kind of accidental. We were making good. a record called Saturday Nights, really, and then sort of started developing this other set of songs, and it seemed like they could fit together. And then we had the idea to find a different producer and do that album with someone else. And we did Saturday Nights here in, in New York City with Gil Norton, who produced Recovering yeah. the Satellites, mm -hmm. all the Pixies records. And then we did uh, Sunday Mornings out in Berkeley with Brian Deck, okay. who did uh, the first Modest Mouse uh, oh, major fantastic. label, Moon in Antarctica. Yeah. Uh, Iron and Wine Records, once they started having whole bands, oh, Fruit Bats, yeah. a lot of indie folk music. Fruit Bats, having them in a long time, it's great. Um, so uh, the dreaded question, is it, are they concept records? Um, kind of accidentally. Okay. I, I, I never think of much ahead of time. I would say it's kind of the other way around. The songs drive the concept more than the concept drives the songs. I mean, we had this set of songs inspired by 1492, which is the first song on the record, mm -hmm. that were all about sort of disintegration and 
And that became Saturday Nights. That was the idea behind that record. Right. And then this other set of songs, you know, sort of began to develop and the idea to do them a different way. And the title kind of was obvious. I, there was a, a Ralph Stanley kind of country gospel okay. record that yeah. we found in this truck stop on the road on our first wow. tour. And it was like a double cassette set. And I, I was addicted to it throughout yeah. the August tours. And uh, so that, that it was called Saturday Night and Sunday Morning. Oh, and there great. was a book called By Alan Silto by that name. It's been used a bunch of times. I want to talk now about this uh, foundation you guys have coming up. Yeah, well, we've been we've had our, uh, a community outreach program for about a decade now. Okay. The idea that we thought was that America's all about the idea of getting involved. That's the whole point of voting. Mm -hmm. You're, each person matters. Right. And I think people, as the world's gotten a lot bigger, have lost sight of that. They think their vote doesn't matter, their voice doesn't matter, their opinion doesn't matter. So we decided a long time ago to work with these local organizations uh, we picked three issues that were important to us, and we found organizations in every town that support those issues. So cool. it's not the environment; it's your park. It's, right. it's you know, it's a it's a, a rape crisis hotline or a clinic in your town. And then on a national level, we bought the tools and put voter registration up on our website, and we ran a food drive. And now we're going to be working with uh, on an international level with Kids for Tomorrow, okay. uh, which is at kidsfortomorrow.org. They are building and funding schools in Nairobi right now, just trying to keep kids in school you know, a little longer, I mean, instead of like seven years old, maybe to 12. And so we're launching Grey Bird Foundation on March 30th with about 10 days in the front of eBay, we're running a lot of auctions to raise the money for it. Uh, and we're going to be offering, because we want this to be something everyone yeah. does, we're going to be offering our services to every band. That's Anyone, fantastic. you have an issue, we'll find you the organizations. You want voter registration tools, we'll buy them and put them on your website. A little silly America that you have to buy voter registration tools. Just yes, it's very bizarre. Bad part of our government. Weird. But, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're, we've are gonna we got Augustana and uh, Dashboard Confessional and Sugarland, and I've been oh, talking nice. to Toby Keith. I'm hoping to get him to do it with us. Oh, that's fantastic. I just want it to be an across the board, you know, doesn't matter if you're Republican, it's total nonpartisan, just about being involved in our country. I think that's awesome, and I can't think of a better way to end the interview and get you guys back up on our stage. So please go out and get Saturday night, Sunday morning. It's on March 25th. You know you will. And these guys are going to take the stage one more time later in the show. Right now, let's check in with Jared, Mr. Pater. Thank you.